So what is this class about and why is it important? Let me just tell you something. I'm not going to go over the course description. Listen, y'all are, are grown, y'all can read. I think there's nothing more insulting than having a professor or an instructor freaking read you a syllabus or read you slides. That's like insulting to your intelligence, insulting um, overall. But like, what is this class about? This class is largely about um, two things, right? Remixing as a concept, as a philosophy, as an ideology, and as a practice, and broadly, broadly defined. We're not just talking about like Harry Potter fans or Star Trek fans or, you know, uh, Let's Play or what, whatever, you know, mashups or beats or whatever. We're talking about how does Disney remix, you know, um, how do companies remix and, and all that stuff. So that's, that's one of the things, the philosophy of that, right? We're also going to talk a lot about the practical side, the legal side. What is copyright? What is patent? What are trademark laws? How do they, how do they work? What is licensing? You know, all, all this stuff, you know, and, and kind of combine that with, with remixing. So you'll learn a lot of the practical stuff, the nuts and bolts of it. You'll also learn, um, you know, more philosophical elements uh, to remixing and make you kind of rethink what that is uh, or what that is to you. Um, other than that, um, you know, listen, yo, what does the United States make? And what do we export to the world, right? Uh, you know, what do we make? We make intellectual properties. We make movies. We make music. Uh, we make pharmaceutical drugs. We make vaccines. Um, we make patented software. We make patented hardware. We make uh, branded goods like Nike sneakers or, or, you know, Ford or whatever. And we export this shit to the rest of the world. Pretty much the reason why this class is just valuable, I think, is that it's going to open your eyes to this. Like, Mo like here's one break it down tangibly about 30 to 50 percent and this number fluctuates the united states gdp which is our economy is based on intellectual properties industries and intellectual properties okay um that being said what do we export you know mostly what, what are exports at least 50 percent of our exports to the world are not tangible things necessarily their brands their copyrights um their pat their patentable you know softwares or, or whatever it is you know apps or or whatever holy shit uh, a top of a big fir tree just blew off about 20 feet off there anyways living in the country um Okay, but um, honestly, like almost any job that you're going to get after college um, is likely going to be involved in intellectual property somehow. So having a knowledge of this stuff is going to help you. If you want to start your own clothing company, if you want to start making your own music, or you make your own music, or you're an artist of some sort, or you're a, you know, a biochem major or something like that, like... All this stuff's also going to help you through your path in, in college, having an understanding, um, you know, of, of all this stuff, you know. Um, you can read the expected learning outcomes. You're going to learn some shit, <laughs> okay? Um, the important disclaimer, though, is that I'm not a lawyer, you know. Um, I'm someone who has gone out of their way to educate themselves on this, on this topic, um, and because of my interest and because of what I, what I, what I do, um, you know, and that, that's super, super important. So just note, like, don't take this as legal advice, you know, don't be like you download, download like six million movies and then you get caught or something like that. You don't say, well, Andre said you could do it, you know, Andre said this or whatever. So, you know, just kind of, this is just general information. It's not solid legal advice okay um workload for this class all right so you should complete two modules a week um you should you know attend the discussions and you'll have a few hours um 
a week of readings and viewings to do before you complete a module. Stuff that um, will, you know, will contextualize and be discussed in, in the lecture videos, okay? Um, the grades for this class, there's three exams. Bam! Okay, you have three tests. They're worth 33.33% of your grade. I love that number, 33 and a third. It is one of my favorite numbers. If you don't know anything about records or vinyl, 12-inch uh, discs mostly revolve at 33 and a third revolutions per minute. So that's why I love that number. Um, anyways, uh, a little bit about grades. Um, here's the deal. I don't give um, 100s and I don't give A pluses. The exams have uh, 50 true false, multiple choice, you know, whatever questions. And then there's like 15, in some cases 20 or 30 bonus questions. So if you score 107, like, but you got like five of the regular questions wrong, you didn't get 100, you got, you know, whatever. So. Um, but the real deal is this, I always think you can do 1% better, so um, I don't like to give 100s. I don't want you to feel like, yo, I'm perfect, like I'm good, like you can always do a little bit better. Um, so I give 99s, that's like the, the, the top. So if you score 114 on an exam, I'll enter that shit in as a 99. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is no A pluses. Yo, yo, the scale is a 4.0 scale, right? 4.0. And A plus is beyond that. You, you know what I'm saying? If whatever. So like it doesn't really exist. And for me, like in, for college students, it's like giving you all a gold star for, you know, leaving the classroom uh, to go to the bathroom instead of, you know, going in your pants. You know, it's just stupid. You know, it's not it's like a preschool, middle school thing for me. So I don't do it. And I apologize for some of y'all whose GPAs may go down to a 4.21. But guess what? That shit don't exist. <laughs> okay.